Okay. Uh, I've clicked record, so we are we are recording. We are live today, uh, live from my office. Um, thank you very much for joining us. This is a power hour, uh, and it's all about should I be selling right now? It's such a difficult topic to kind of navigate right now. Um, there's so much going on up here. Uh, you know, should I sh should I be actually reaching out to customers? Should I be talking to them? Should I be selling that horrible word? Should I be Oh, it's so difficult because everybody's in a different, different circumstances right now. The idea of Power Hour, for those of you who don't know, who haven't been part of either one of our accelerators or one of our programs, the idea of a Power Hour is the, is the strength of collective thought. So we will come around the room and just get everybody's uh, ideas out. We'll get everybody's ideas on the table, where they are right now. Because if you say something, um, it, it doesn't matter what's been said, Somebody else might pick up on it. It might be a hot tip. It might be something that just moves that person forward in their thinking. So it's not going to be all about me sat here talking at you. Um, I've got a few hints and tips from a mindset point of view, a few things that we've noticed from entrepreneurs just having those conversations with them over the past couple of weeks. But it's very much going to be over to you. Um, depending on how many people we have join us, at the moment there's 10 people in the room, so that's great. Um, depending on how many people you have joined, if we might just break out into a couple of rooms, just have those conversations and then bring it together and, um, and share best practice. That's the idea of this. Just get a get a hint, get a get a tip, get something that's going to enable you to move forward and get a clearer pattern of thought when approaching this. Should I be selling right now? Okay. So, with that in mind, my first. Reference point is this. Again, if you haven't had in, any interaction with Entrepreneur Spark, this is what we're about. This is this is the basis of everything that we do. It's all around the mindset of the entrepreneur. It's useful for not just entrepreneurs, but intrapreneurs and anybody who just wants to focus on something or just know where to focus to move them forward. What we're not saying on this on this slide here is that you should all be doing all these things at all times. Uh, absolutely not. Um, it's all about looking at these things and, and dialing them up when you need to and dialing them down knowing where you need to focus today is going to help you uh, move to that next level so it's very much around the mindset pick up on a couple of these things that you're not great at uh, who can help you with them who do you need to put around you and pick out the ones that you're actually really um, really good at as well and if there's somebody on, on, on one of these calls somewhere out there on when you're networking when you're talking to other people that isn't good at that Help them out, lend your superpower in, because it can really benefit somebody else. So it's not about doing all of these things all at once, it's about dialing them up, dialing them down, knowing what you're good at and what you're um, not so fond of, um, and getting support with it. The bit that we're looking at today is this, I'm constantly selling and pitching. I'm constantly selling and pitching, that kind of uh, sets a tone already. Um, okay, so let's just go around the room, and, and those, who, those of you who are brave enough, uh, it would be great just to hear your thoughts and it can just be a couple of sentences where your head's at right now on this topic of selling so what are you doing right now somebody come in and give me a give me a couple of sentences on what they're doing in terms of selling right now okay so i'll start uh, steve here from uh, social circle i uh, we run a business which is about me People meeting each other, connecting, you know, having experiences, discovering new passions. Uh, so how can we uh, take that and then actually have all these people connecting, having a sense of belonging, still creating a community, but on this positive. So what we've done is we've actually, now this week, now that we're out the trenches, so to speak, you know, uh, is actually look at this in a different way and say, can we pivot as a business? Now, when this resumes back as normal, we will still have people connected, but yeah. how can we use technology now, uh, and what are the technology limitations or possibilities? Now, when you're not used to technology, this is all new to me, okay, Mr. E Spark, uh, no name there, but anyway, sorry. Um, I'll change, so, I'll uh, change that. For you, okay, there you go. So just trying to understand this, and if you understand something, then you understand what you're in control of, because at the end of the day, you can only control what you can control. You can't control anything the government's do. You can only control Jeremy, thank you. So, uh, so yeah, I'm uh, looking at how I can bring a calendar of events 
uh, to my current members uh, yeah. of things that I can facilitate, but at the same time, what is, now, when the calendar now becomes, you know, over the, the course of April, it becomes more and more populated, I have not, no longer got the restrictions of just being here in Greater Manchester, you know? Because it's people orientated and people getting together, it's a community here. But now, actually, whether it be, you know, the Northwest, whether it be UK or whether it be the world, you know, that my calendar can now actually represent a much more diverse, varied, and multicultural, experience-led uh, side of what people want away from work. And I think there's a lot of help there in terms of what uh, B2B, but very much on the B2C, what is it that actually employers are offering employees through this uh, tech? People still need entertained. You know, they still need a voice. They still need a leader. They still need yeah. these different experiences to watch a movie and then do a Zoom. How do you find the movie? Do a, a quiz or do a coffee morning, whatever it is. You start small and start to get bigger. But uh, So that's my, I'm starting this week to learn from Zoom experiences mm -hmm. and uh, learn. I've just finished one, we, uh, another one, and there was like 40 of us on it. It was a bit overwhelming for me, to be fair, but uh, okay. um, uh, I've always gone from, from zero to burst, you know, but yeah. and stuff like that. But, uh, so I, I think, think you've... Uh, I think you picked up on a couple of really key points there, Stephen. First off, you've you've looked at a model and tried to pivot. What um, and pivoting is really really important. You, you know, you're not moving away from that vision where you want to get to at the end. What you are doing is just taking a slight detour around uh, around a little a, a blockage that's going to help you towards your vision. And and it's interesting when you talk about those pivots. It might be useful for everybody else to have a look at their business model and go right. What is it that I can do now? That little step change to the left which is going to help you move forward in a different direction towards that vision. Vision doesn't change, still looking at it, still going that way, but what is that little iteration? The other thing is, i uh, pick up on that um, as well, Stephen, everybody is, everybody is still, I mean, there's probably more communication in this world right now than I've ever seen before, which is, which is awesome, which is fantastic. Um, so what are the avenues that, where, where people are communicating and how can we, how can we interrupt that cycle, that pattern, and just be a fly on the wall, or be somebody, just be a, be an authority in the area that we're, we, we are an authority on. Um, and it's just holding those conversations where, I guess we're not, I guess we're not directly selling. We're just gathering insight, data, and information, which is gonna help us to use that pivot, whichever way that is, and go in a different direction. So thank you for that, Stephen. Who else? Who else? What else is um, anybody doing in terms of? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, so thank you very much. My name is Samuel Lee, and I'm based in Leeds. Uh, my business really is financial education, teaching people about money and how money works. Yeah. And when I look at what's happened in the last two, three weeks, generally, I sit in people's homes, and I teach them, and I give them a plan that gets them from where they are to where they want to be. However, it's been absolutely awesome this last week or so. Um, a classic example would be, I've got teams all over the country, and I was in Newcastle a month ago to train a lady. I left Leeds at 12, drove there two hours, went to see two families, finished about 8 o'clock at night, drove home. I didn't get back until about nearly 10 o'clock at night. Now, I did the same thing last week, and it took us four hours. So, again, it's thinking about just being able to use what we have now. I didn't have yeah. to drive to Newcastle, which saved me petrol which saved me time. <laughs> Instead of doing it 12 hours, it took us four hours. Yeah. And I think for me, I'm constantly looking for people to come and work in my business, to train all over the country. And so for me, being able to do this in the comfort of my home is absolutely awesome. I'm loving yeah. it. Um, so hey, yeah, listen, that's, it's that's not, where I am right now. It's not, it's not for everybody. It doesn't fit everybody's model of work. You're quite fortunate, yeah. Sam. You're in a position where you can actually do things from home and, and continue your work. So, yeah. uh, brilliant. Great news for you. Yeah, we've we've, had, we've had to change. We've had to take that. So, yeah. we've had to just change like that. So, Let's yeah. hear from somebody yeah. who, doesn't have the, um, who doesn't have the model right now to be able to deliver that service from home and save time and money. I mean, a revelation for you, Sam. Great. But go on. Who, who else? 
Um, just on the just on the chat there, um, Martina's come and said she's been working with she's been running free webinars um, as she was originally work as, as had a workshop schedule. She's been running them as webinars. Another great use of technology and another good place where we can get to with this current crisis is moving our model online for sure. Lo loads of people are doing that. What about those who can't do that? Have you been selling, Deepak? Have you been so, selling? Uh, okay, I. I'll tell you, selling is my Achilles heel. I have no idea what selling. I'm a technical guy. So I, one of the things I sell is, uh, for example, a system with an app. And I have been banding about it for over 10 years going, oh, you can do everything from anywhere. And mm -hmm. everyone just goes, my system works. I don't need, I don't need to do this. So I've sent marketing information. I've set up my email marketing. I'm trying to learn marketing myself. How it works as a technical person you go what an idiot you, you, you can't even say this happens this no you can't it doesn't work so i've lost that to my pedal but now what focus i am going on is how to use this scenario to my advantage to what i'm thinking to what i can say so i'm going right how do you protect your uh, people who work for you Mm -hmm. and still get them to work for you oh you know what i've got you, you can use my system app and it will work anywhere on any device so they don't need to get to your work uh, to the office or desk so i am trying to mold the conversation which i've been having before saying you can do this from anywhere blah 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 to now moving it on to saying you know by the way this could last for long three to six months and and this is not just come about by me generating an app or something. I actually have a day job. I work in the train for two hours in the morning. I mm -hmm. work in my lunch hour from wherever I am. I'm in the Midlands. I work in London. I go there. I then do another work for an hour. I use my phone to connect to my servers in France, my laptop, whatever. And then I do my deployments in the train and I come back and it's done. So I, I already run and preached this anyway. So I sent an email response to, you know, you would have received a lot of emails about COVID, you know, how customers and people are changing. And I've gone the other way. I've gone, actually, no change here. We already work this way anyway. So the idea of what I'm kind of thinking now is to utilize the same thing and say, by the way, world's changed. You need to change. And we've been doing this for last seven or eight years anyway. So mm -hmm. come and join the party kind of thing. Yeah. But to be honest, the, 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 the stuff that I've said now is more than the sales thing I've said <laughs> in two months. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, we did uh, we do morning mindset check-ins every morning at 8.30 uh, a.m. put them out on social. One of them was about uh, engaging with your customers. Um, and the number of emails that I've had through my inbox that have been entitled COVID-19 that I have not read is far greater than the one or two that have actually clicked on and gone, do you know what? That might be interesting um, because everybody's doing it. So in terms of sending an email, I think it's great how you're coming at it from a different angle. How can everybody else come at it from a different angle? One of the biggest key parts of that is actually uh, using the language that your customers want to hear right now. So if I was your customer and you were writing COVID-19 update at the top of your emails, I'm not reading it. So is anybody, what, what do they want to hear? What do they want help with? Their problem and their, their, problem and their pain points have changed. The other part of it is their customer journey has changed. They're, they're looking for different ways of solving their problems and their, um, to get solutions for their pain points. So, so my understanding your customer journey email is going to be really important. So Sorry, my email is going more going in terms of how do you protect or safeguard your employees. Yeah. My yeah. my emails are going in terms of our customer services is absolutely open and working because the way we always worked is different. I'm not saying any of the other sort going, oh, you need to do this or buy this. No, no, no. I'm saying how do you keep your customers safe? How do mm -hmm. you keep your people safe? How do you create, uh, you know, solve the issues of customers who might already be there in whatever customer their customers are, yeah. or you know how with us even in this case there would have been literally no impact for you. 
mm. uh, for your customer service, for your systems, for anything like that. Yeah. So it's it's again turning in terms of what would make sense to them rather than being in a complete shutdown case. So for example, my customers are holiday parks, right? Now it's in tourism. So they are completely shut down or mm -hmm. kind of should be shut down, but they aren't yet. They are, but they're empty. Yeah, nobody's going there. So that's where you're going, right. Now, if you work with us, your systems, you haven't got support. You haven't got a system. If it goes down with us, would have been no problem because we are not changing anything we just used to work like that anyway in the first place our dna is already designed for this kind of eventuality that, well that's the game anyway yeah it it, it is interesting because not everybody again not, not everybody's in the same boat as you deeper anybody you know you're you this is almost an opportunity for you to to be able to have those conversations um and one of the things is we've got a captive audience right now who are sat at their computers watching emails, reading emails, uh, coming on well, webinars and in chat forums and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's one of the key points that we've been talking to people about is actually going where your customer is now. Talked about that customer journey before. How do you now get involved in the forums that they're involved in? See what they're talking about. And again, it's about insight because for me, and I don't know if anybody else, and please, please, please come in if you agree or don't disagree with this. For me, selling is not, uh, it, it doesn't exist for me. It's about relationship building. If you create enough value within a relationship, somebody will somebody will take what you offer. Um, and you have to create the value for that person to give them a motivation to buy something off you. So if you're talking in terms of value, the value you're creating, the benefit you're delivering to a customer, um, while relationship building, then you'll have a customer for life. You take them on the journey with you. Um, so what has how has your customer journey changed? Uh, so how, um, oh, go on, Debbie. Um, so it's, um, Debbie from Salon Angels. Um, my offering and my opportunity hasn't really changed. I coach salons and salon coaches. Yep. Um, obviously the salon industry has completely shut down. Um, so a lot of my clients have seen their client base and their affordability dry up overnight. But the sure. biggest challenge we're facing is that the marketplace has suddenly been flooded with an awful lot of people who are purporting to be experts, who are not charging a penny for this advice, coaching, consultancy. Um, and, and my message to them um, and has been for me is remain consistent, know your worth. Um, yeah. it, it's a race to the bottom if you're trying to price match. Um, yeah. But it's it almost it's being seen as a little bit vulgar to sell at normal pricing levels, I think, but it's mm -hmm. still quite early days. So I just wondered what other people, if anybody else was facing the same challenge and are they kind of staying firm on their beliefs or are they flexing a little bit? Could I, um, great question. Um, could I jump in on that? Yeah. Who's speaking? It's Ranjit here. Ranjit, go for it. So, um, we're a social good business. Um, we're in virtual, um, uh, fundraising challenges so we built a whole platform from the hardware to the app to a fundraising platform actually built in because one of the biggest problems was always um, if the charities couldn't set up a challenge if they asked someone to even go to a third party say like Great North Run or London Marathon then you got to chase them for please set up your fundraising page and then please can you do the fundraising so we built it all as one big thing um, and um, we decided we've got a very small onboarding fee, just 350 pounds. So for a tiny community group, all the way up to the largest charity in the UK, actually the fee is 350 pounds because we decided it's a level playing field. Everyone gets to play, uh, gets to have really powerful tools. But I've made a decision because so many of the charities are coming along and saying, look, can we come on board? But if we want to come on board quick, but if we have to pay even 350 pounds, it will be committee, have to go through the director, um, you know. And I just thought, you know what, as a social good business, I'm just going to open it up. Okay. Um, we, uh, you know, um, it's not devaluing our service. In all honesty, there is no other service like this. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're so, Ranjit, just come, just come back. So, once, once this crisis is over, do you revert back to your previous um, uh, payment strategy? I would do, yeah. And how are you messaging that to them right now? Because that'd be interesting we, we for other people. So the, 
I, I actually came on to, to the, um, this power hour because um, I actually am struggling with the selling bit purely because um, that's the best we can do is to take off the onboarding. At the end of the day, we still got to charge for, for the users um, and, you know, we've got to make some money. Otherwise, there's no point, you know, it's a tech startup at the end of the day. It costs a lot of money. Sure. Um, so my, my problem, uh, I, I guess, is the wording. You know, um, uh, we're, we're, we're opening it up in two ways by saying, look, you can come on board for free. We can't guarantee um, that you'll have people wanting to do challenges or even people with money to fundraise because the charities know that too. But the messaging has to be along the lines of, you know, we may be in a pandemic, but the world hasn't stopped turning. Mm -hmm. We still need to uh, help those who need our help every day, including today. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's about trying to get that message out to, the, to the, the people who may want to participate, but to the charities who are now coming and saying, but we really don't have any money. Can you help us? Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, maybe I should take the bottom line. Some, some, someone said to me, if they can't afford 350 quid, Ranj, then you may, they're not your customer. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's not, not so fair as well. It's a, but I was it, just it, interested in listening to people. So. It's, a, it's, a good, it's a good point. Um, to come back to Debbie's point on this whole race to the bottom, and should we be actually, you know, should we be giving things for free uh, and then reverting back to previous payment strategies? Are we actually devaluing our brand when we, um, when, when we do things for free? Should we just be gathering insight and waiting and gathering customers ready for when it comes back? What, what does that look like for other people? I'd love to hear from somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Um, can, I, uh, can I jump in, Jeremy? Who's that? It's Alan Brown. <coughs> Alan. Yeah, so I'm in the corp world. I'm not in the entrepreneurial space. I almost was a couple of years ago, and who knows, I might be again. <laughs> but I'm in, um, but uh, I'm back for the moment, at least in the kind of big tech, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Um, and and where I where I think we seem to be straddling at the moment and not quite sure which way to go is, do we propose pure care, pure care solutions? non-profiteering pure care solutions to our customers right now mm -hmm. or do we or do we just revert back to an honest pure sale approach and continue almost business as usual perhaps with a different type of conversation because the halfway house i'm starting to feel uncomfortable with which is what i would call the puppy dog care proposal you know the <laughs> puppy dog clothes where you're giving someone something for free for a while whilst mm -hmm. there's this trouble in the world and the idea is that they they love it and they they, they consume it and then we start to charge for it down the line yeah um is so i've got to jump at half past I've got another call but i'd just love to get people's gut reaction to that is that okay or is that less honest than just pure selling why would somebody else not move afterwards when things improve to somebody else if there's not enough say, value now why would same, there be value in the future? The same reason you keep the puppy dog. <laughs> yeah, as, as Debbie, we, go on. I, 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 I'm from a completely different point of view. If yeah, you would see now, like the shopping that you're doing, what are you shopping? You're not buying a puppy dog. You're buying basics and essentials. So all businesses will have peaks and troughs. The idea is that the trough, you should still survive so that you can have the peak. I'm afraid to say most businesses don't run that way. Um, hence, the, hence the problem, hence the question. So if you can live through the trough, then the question doesn't even arise. Yeah, I probably have to go into the details of the, of the actual proposals, which mm. probably take too long. But um, no, I just wondered if, if there was any opinions on the, on the principles of uh, the thing. Um, okay. What, what's your capacity? Does it benefit you to have this audience even if you don't retain them is there any benefit for you uh, if so i think the give is a good thing to do if you're not busy enough um would be my gut reaction yeah i'm just yeah it, it, potentially yeah the, the, basically there's the kind of three stages isn't there we offer something out there that we think can help in this current climate only a subsection of our of the people we approach take it and only a subsection of those people who take it will continue to, to use it and maybe pay for it in the future. 
But the people that took it and handed it back, I can't imagine they're going to feel badly uh, about uh, having mm -hmm. used it for a few months. And even the people that um, didn't respond, uh, there, there probably isn't much of a downside. Um, the main, the main um, thrust of my question, I guess, is we're struggling to get our sellers, and I'm one of them, um, to get comfortable. Because I think you, in, in your session the other day, Jeremy, uh, on the morning session, the mindset session, you said now's not the time to hide away. You need to communicate, almost over -communic communicate. But myself included, the people in my organization are nervous about who does that conversation go to? What does it look like? Um, what's the timing of it? And, and, and the danger of that is that we just decide it's too hard and, yep. and we hide under the cover. Yeah. I, I, t I totally agree with that. Um, yeah, that, the morning mindset check-in was, was, it was a reminder to myself as well that um, we needed to continue the conversation um, and continue to build those relationships in whatever format those relationships wanted to be built from the other side. Yeah. Um, that, kind of, that kind of brings me on to, um, I, we, I've, just put some I've just put my, my first reactions to all of this stuff down. Um, I'm sorry, apologies, I've got to jump, but I'll, I'll be looking cool. to join other sessions. Sorry, about no, that's that. okay. And we're uh, we're recording it, so I'll, I'll forward it on anyway. So um, yeah. Okay. What, Thank you. Cheers. What Alan, what Alan was talking about there, um, for me, is very much around empathy and emotional intelligence. Walking a mile in your customer's shoes right now and understanding where they are in their journey, and it it doesn't have to be opening any conversation up with a with a whole um, you know. Could you want to buy my product? It could just be a simple conversation about how you feeling. You know, where are you now? How have you? How are you? How are you solving your your pains right now? It's it's, it's more indirect than than actually going in there and saying, "Can I sell to you?" Understanding, having the empathy, having the emotional intelligence to understand where somebody is right now on their journey, uh, because their sales cycles change, their working patterns change, the distractions have changed. Understanding all that will then enable you to know the right time to actually approach them with a sales conversation. And also, it will also allow you to think, right, well, if that's not their pain now, and here is their pain, what do I need to do to slightly pivot, to change direction, not away from the vision, just that slight little side step to understand how I can solve that pain that they have right now. And that then comes down to actually just simply just understanding their journey. Um, yeah, we talked about building their networks earlier, building your networks as well. Right now, a load of people have moved online. They're hanging around in, in forums, chat rooms, uh, webinars like this. And, and go, go and understand where they are. Go and understand what language they're using. Um, go and understand what help they're trying to seek. And that'll help you understand then what their problem is and how you can solve it. Um, yeah, let's just open it up. I put a few things up there, but it'd be good to hear from other people about, you know, are there any other, you know, key key points that you want to raise or key tips that you've been using to help people continue to either sell, there's a dirty word, or continue relationship building. Martina, you want to come in? Yes, um, my organisation is it's called Rafa Therapy Services. So what we do yeah. is we offer training around mental health well-being resilience and then i'm also a um, cognitive behavior therapist yeah so as a result of um, the coronavirus crisis i've set up a private facebook group looking at helping people looking at addressing the emotional impact and that wasn't done to generate money but it was meeting a need yeah but that in itself is creating a new community and yeah. that's allowed me to discover that actually I spent a lot of time investing on time on LinkedIn, but it's allowed me to discover that um, Facebook is a very useful platform. And because I had my workshops pre pre scheduled, I had one today. I changed them into a webinar, so I had to adopt the delivery method. I mean, I felt okay with that because I I work online as well. I think mm -hmm. you just got to adapt, and you've got to go with the, just kind of you've got to, well, we are out of our comfort zone. I think you just got to ride with the storm, be uncomfortable. And um, I've discovered that um, 
you know, I've just been doing some Facebook ads and it's been very effective in terms of getting a lot of people to register for my webinars. So I'm looking at building my, my um, email list now as yeah. well. So it's kind of forced me to do things that I was delaying. Yeah. I and love my, the idea of creating a, 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 a forum and, a, you know, it could be a chat room, it could be a group, it could be an anything mm -hmm. where actually people can just have a, have a conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And all you do is curate it. You don't, you know, you, you probably, I don't know if you interact with it. I don't know what, but you allow the conversation to occur. But you mm -hmm. gather insight from that and you understand what you, what's going on in your customer's mind, which has helped you to go, do you know mm -hmm. what? I now need to build my, um, uh, my, my network, my uh, address list to be able to actually yes. talk to these people because this is where they've gone now. Yes. That is a mm -hmm. super, super, super point about understanding the difference in somebody's customer journey, putting something in there to help them with it, solve a need right now, but then allow mm -hmm. you to think about what you need to do in the future to actually build the business, carry on building those yeah. Love yeah. it. And I think I've also noticed that, I think you shared it earlier, that this, this is a time to be visible and that mm -hmm. really resonated with me because I think I've noticed that actually a lot of my competitors are not actually saying anything. I don't see them running workshops. <laughs> and obviously I know the, the pandemic has affected everyone in different ways, but because I already had um, the workshop planned yeah. and people booked onto it, I had to go ahead yeah. with it. Yeah. So I, think I, it's, I do see it depending on what your business, you can leverage that. Yeah, you turn, absolutely. It's, it's, it's on the point of, um, under the point of kind of uh, engage with your customers now. You know, if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're, be the first point of call when normality, more, normality comes back into play. And mm -hmm. being first point of call will mean that you're at the top of their inbox or you're actually, you've built a relationship with them where they're just checking in with you or, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're checking in with them, just asking them those kind of, empathetic questions about how they're getting on because as soon as everything comes back to reality you're going to be in a position where you can hold decent conversations and who's the first person that they're going to come to it's the person who they've been interacting with throughout this whole journey so mm -hmm. yeah great great point great point martina and, and martina and i so agree with it, what you said you know the way you've changed what i'm seeing is the mindset remember it's not only you i've changed my mindset Mm -hmm. so maybe I was in this field anyway, but that was my problem. People, my competitors were much, much bigger than I am. I am a one-man band. They are mm -hmm. multi-million income. But the thing is, their business model was completely different way. Now, with what my skills are, online skills, this thing, social media, or email marketing, that's my skill. Now, I'm trying to utilize, because I know not only the game has changed for me, but the game has also changed for them too. Yep. They are thinking, sitting there, thinking, my emails sent during December, Jam, Feb, were literally dying, literally dying. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna go, right, once I do my next plan, I know when I send my emails now out, people will be on their desk. I have seen the problem of problem, the, the addiction people have created on social media, being on the phones. I can't get my wife off the mobile phone. <laughs> she stops work. Till 11 o'clock, we have a fight every day. You know, I can't even talk to her because she's got a phone in front of her. And, but I would say the same thing would be true for all these other people as well. So if that is my core strength, as you say, nobody else is doing it, that's your core. That would be our core strength to get, you know, get that space our name and then yeah it's really an and that understanding comes from, where they and are all now. this comes from a person who has no idea about marketing i can yeah. tell you right now i as i said i've spoken more about marketing in the last hour than i've done in the last yeah time. well we're all marketing when we're building these relationships with our customers that is marketing you know it's a, it's again it's one of those horrible words just like selling marketing is a scary old word but it's holding conversations and it's actually just speaking to people in the way they want to be spoken to um, finding the value I come from a, I, I don't know, maybe I just come from a different part of the world. And for us, maybe that's why my sales is not that good. It, well, at least compared to the UK is because I always worked as marketing. Well, sales was a business relationship. People forgot the word relationship completely. So when yeah. I go into meetings, I've lost businesses that way. Where I was saying, what is your business about? What is doing? What, what is your problem? What is your challenge? I would get now go away. 
that's fine. The problem is I don't even want that customer. I do not have a problem because I'm a small business. I can pay my bills without even my business running. But then I would reckon that a lot of times they don't get sold that way. They get sold 150 units, 300 pounds, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's it's interesting that that's good. Work. It's, it's got to be it's got to be solving a problem. It's got to be solving somebody's pain point. That's the bit that gives them motivation to buy from you. It's a personal thing. It's up here. You've got to approach head and heart and go in with it. You know, you're you're creating enough value for somebody to go. Do you know what? That's the decision I'm going to make. My buying decision is made because my head and my heart are engrossed in that person, and I'm going to make that buying decision to do that. So key number key point number three there. Empathy and emotional intelligence will help you during this time. I, I'll let you into a secret, everybody, and, um, uh, and I don't want any, anybody out with the violins or anything, but um, I was supposed to be getting married this year in Rome in June, um, and I'm supposed to be on my stag do tomorrow, uh, which is also abroad, um, but all of that's been moved. Now, when I went to those people in Rome and said, all of the vendors, I said to them, you know, we're not going to be able to do this. Can we move it? All of those people, bar one person, all of them, all of the vendors for my wedding said, no problem at all, we'll move it on. We'll move it on, no problem, really understand where you're at, we understand where we're at, they didn't, all of that, we'll move it to whenever you want to move it to. Brilliant. One person went, um, no, unfortunately, due to the contract, says this, this, and this, no, you can't, therefore. So, we're not going to be using that person when we actually come around to our wedding next year. So, what... That there's lessons in there, certainly around understanding and being, being empathetic towards the customer's journey right now, being able to keep that and retain that custom further down the line. So there's a big trade-off between selling to them right now and taking the money and then building up that relationship for later down the line where they might even buy from you twice, let alone once. So you know, there's loads of stuff in it. Anyway, it, yeah. it is so brilliant thing you touched, and this is exactly the industry I work in, you know, like in the holiday industry, the hospitality industry. And one of the things my, I spoke to my customer two days ago, and I said, it's brilliant um, the way our system's written is to say, like, right, you can cancel this booking now. We are happy. We'll keep the money, and we can give you another booking next year, and we'll just balance it out. Now they have a problem. They've already spent the money. They already have spent the staff. They've already spent the money. Now, if they, somebody people ask them for the money back, then they're gonna go bust. So that's why they're going right. And what my answer to them is: we have a system to help you with this. Yeah. Right? You have that problem. Your customers have that problem. We can help you with managing a business where through this transaction, because probably mine is the only system in cooking system which does that so I'm like, okay right we can help you with that so kind of exactly the problems that you're facing so how make it relevant make it current and yep. capitalize interesting okay um who else wants to come in on any of those points that have just been raised anybody got anything uh, you know maybe different or a, or a different point of view hi can i just say something i have to say can you hear me? yes we can go hi. ahead um, it's been really interesting listening to everyone and, and hearing sort of the, the similarities and, and differences in approaches. And uh, I sympathise with what Debbie was saying. I'm a chartered occupational psychologist and yep. I, I guess I do a mixture uh, of training and consultancy. And I've also seen a, a lot of people coming out of the woodwork making all sorts of claims about what we can deliver for next to nothing. And I, I really, I agree with Debbie. I don't think that it, that is the right way to go. Um, I think I'm offering some freebies, but the, the only freebies I'm offering are to existing clients. And it's really about trying to support them during this difficult time. So I'm just saying to them, you know, here's, here's something I, I wrote that might help you. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you free of charge. Happy to help. Um, yeah. With regard to to the rest of the business, I guess what I'm thinking is actually given me the opportunity to, to actually sit back and think, well, hang on a minute, is this what I continue, what I want to continue doing? And I'm actually thinking that it, it, it's helping me think about how to totally refocus the business and actually shift the balance from more sort of um, training style approaches to, to more of an emphasis on, on consultancy and deeper value. So, 
it's, it's interesting. I think we're, we're living in interesting times. And although this thing has come out of the blue and knocked us all for six, I think there are some, I think there's some interesting um, possibilities. It's just a matter of trying to sort of keep your sanity and your calm and try and work through what those options might be. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you. There's, um, there's a couple of things that I've read recently. First off, um, it'll be inaction that is the killer of most businesses during this time. So actually not doing anything is probably worse than trying something new or trying to innovate and do something different within your business model. The other thing I saw um, the other day was that uh, out of the 2008 crisis came some of the most innovative business models that we've seen in generations. So I believe Uber came out of the last um, uh, financial crisis. There were, there were about five or six that were written down. I can't remember, I'm trying to remember them. But um, yeah, absolutely. So if we, if we just go and try, try something, what can we lose? Let's go and try something different, learn from it, and see how that helps us in the future. I like the fact that, Sharon, you're, you're actually going in, trying something new, and actually, that might change the whole shape of your business and what people want. So, um, yeah, I think just learning from it's gonna be important. Sorry, Sharon, go ahead. No, no, sorry, that was, I was just, I was just uh, agreeing that, you know, really, and, there are some things we used to do that uh, we either have to do differently or perhaps can't do at all if we can't find a creative way. Mm. So I think we have to start thinking about, well, what else? What else do we want to do? Yep. Maybe it's not the same as we used to do. Who knows? No, absolutely. And there is a trade-off as well. There's a trade-off between what we think they want, our customers want, what we think the value is, and what the actual perceived value is. Uh, we, I mean, we did, we did, we did a thing with um, entrepreneurs where we've got two people who buy the same product, for two completely different reasons. So we've got to understand the reason why people have bought from us in the past, why, why they're buying from us now, and also the value that we're creating at this point and what problem we're solving for them, which is going to reshape us, which is going to make us, allow us to go and reimagine our business model and do something. So, yeah. Deepak, go on, what's this? My wife said to me last night that you'll make money, you will be... 80 and then die. I told her at least I'll die trying. So true. Exactly. It was so funny. It, it, it was just <laughs> something you just said. It just it sort of resonates. It's, it, it, it's just the conversations you happen. I, I take it with all of us. You know, there is a business life and there is a personal life. And obviously, all this thinking, blah, 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 does take a turn on you as a person. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I have a day job as well. And this yeah. is my lunch hour. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, in, in that case, you know, I was working till half eleven or something like that. And she said, "Well, oh, you know, you've been trying this for so long. So, so what?" And and the point is, <laughs> do what, do nothing. This did, yes. And I think I'd urge, uh, err on the side of caution in terms of if you're doing the same thing and getting the same results, then probably worth trying something different getting different results <laughs> but no I, I can see you nodding away there Deepak I think that's me oh I've been, me trying, said, I've been trying my sales I'm not a sales guy so I've been trying my sales every time yeah changing changing I am completely learning how not to logically think yeah <laughs> yeah well exactly you know us, us logic thing because I'm a T you know if you look at the old Myers-Briggs I'm a T so I take logic and I go right this is obviously the way so I have to put a structure around if, if I'm selling or, or, or having that, that, those kind of sales conversations, I have to stop myself from thinking about the facts and come back to a structure which is all about emotional intelligence, empathy, just understanding the other person's wants, needs, desires. Because when I, when I use this and this in, 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 in the ratio that it's supposed to, then I, I, um, I actually learn, learn stuff. So, um, yeah, anyway. Um, Anybody else want to uh, quickly say anything? Or I mean, we're we've got a, we've got about eleven minutes left anyway. So um, please jump in. What are anybody else's thoughts? Anybody get any nuggets? Or I tell you what, has anybody got any anywhere where they they have been had some decent feedback, information, uh, any nuggets that will help anybody move forward today? Okay. Well, if you do. And by all means, you know, jump on chat, uh, put it onto put it onto the chat, um, 
and there's um, there's so much going on out there. You really, it's really difficult knowing how to cut through the noise and find out what is going to help, um, but also understand where your customers are. Debbie, you've just taken yourself off mute. Did you want to say something? Yes. I've, I've got, got a question. Me, so, um, where will I find um, any more of the webinars? This is the first one I came across yeah. on LinkedIn this morning. So where can okay. we catch up the rest? Just so happens that my next slide, Debbie, was what we have available for link support. So um, normally we're out with large corporate organizations trying to help them innovate and, and think differently, to act differently. Um, we also have entrepreneurial accelerators um, around the globe. So um, we've actually cleared our diaries and we're just trying to support people in the conversations and just listen and, and just support and facilitate conversations like this. So few areas of support that you can get from us um, if they've been useful please please revisit them the um, we have the open accelerator which is a Facebook group this is an open source accelerator for entrepreneurs intrapreneurs anybody who just wants to move forward in their role um, it's open source which means it's free and the the help is on there uh, we're gonna go about four of 400 people on there at the moment it's an MVP it's a small thing so uh, jump on there and that'll iterate and there'll be an accelerator that's going to go on on there which will be accessible for anybody. Um, second up, if you want a one-to-one, -one, we've, uh, again, we've got a team of people who are just waiting to help. Uh, they're absolutely free. We don't expect anything at all. Uh, we're just trying to help. And it's an honest conversation with support and challenge. And if you do want that, uh, if you do want a one-to-one, -one, it's an hour long, just email hello at entrepreneurial-spark.com with a one-to-one -one sign up title and by all means jump on we'll um we'll, we'll, we'll hold a one-to-one -one with you and help you move forward in whatever you're doing right now um again no strings attached um daily check-ins so we run daily check-ins at 1 p.m on on the zoom link um i know phase on this chat right now um phase one of our team members i wonder if you could just fetch the links Faye, if possible and pop them into the chat um, I don't have them available to me right now. Um, but there's the daily check ins 1 p.m. By all means, go and have a look at our social feeds because they're on there. Uh, any of those links that I'm, I'm talking about here. The next power hour is tomorrow um, at the same time, 2 p.m. And I will be, they'll be, again, on those social links, we'll be, uh, we'll be put, putting out the link for tomorrow's power hour. So have a look on there. Um, and that's all about working on the business, not in it. So we've got this great opportunity right now to work on the business. So where should we focus our time? What should we be doing? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a great, great one to get hold of. And then um, we're running a webinar on Friday, just off the back of everything that we've, that we've heard uh, from all the people that we've been speaking to on knowing your numbers, but we're coming out from an alternative way because I've been on at least two or three now, know your numbers sessions that have been so boring. So we're trying to get actionable tips, uh, top tips, help, support, that you can just take it and go away and use. So we've teamed up with Alpaca, who are a law firm, uh, Ernst Young, which are a large accountancy firm, and um, Futurely, who are a, an online, um, they're an app, they're an um, accountancy small business app. We've teamed up with them, we're getting their top tips, we're going to do our mindset top tips. Um, the webinar, again, it's, the, link is on, um, the link is on, um social media feeds and phase just putting them up there so by all means just carry on joining the, these conversations you never know what you're going to get from them and um, you never know who's going to be on somebody will be able to help uh so continue the conversations and please just be part of it as we move forward um Thanks. no problem at all uh phase just putting in some links in the um actually she's put the link into all of the links so that's our newsletter which kind of expands all of this stuff uh, so Faye has put into everybody just our MailChimp link that says uh, that goes to all the news the newsletter which has the signups for all of these webinars and and power hours. So uh, by all means, click on that, take a picture of it, whatever you need to do, uh, go on there and just go and get the support that you need when you need it. Cool. That's it from me. Um, unless anybody else has got anything else to say, please please stay safe, uh, stay isolated, save our NHS, and all of the above. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again very, very soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jeremy. Cheers, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.